Welcome to the Buckass Nerdcast, the only audio show on the internet where you don't have to be afraid to show your full frontal nerdity. I am your host, Trimmer Death, and uh, this is the first episode. I actually was going to call the blog Full Frontal Nerdity, except apparently that's like a web comic, so you're welcome. You're welcome, web comic. That we didn't have some sort of legal battle that you would have probably absolutely won with no contest whatsoever. As I said, uh, this is uh, Trimmer Death. I am your host, and I am uh, 30 years old. I am a gamer. I live in southern Indiana, the heartland of America. That's really it. I'm into movies and games, and I want to fucking talk about them. Oh, yeah, and I promise to say fuck at least six times per uh, nerdcast. So, um, fuck. That's three. That's the what the Nerdcast is about. That's who I am. That's all you really need to know for right now. I'm sure sorted, sorted details about my life will come to light as time goes on, as I get emails about the show. Everybody who's not listening to it, uh, fuck you. Yeah. Because you, if you aren't listening to it, you can't hear my insults. It is actually a little past, well not a little past, it's like uh, almost 2 a.m. my time. Because I work a 30, or a, 30 <laughs> a shitty third shift job using none of my uh, education whatsoever. So what to talk about this week? Well, it's near the end of the year, and I wanted to talk about my favorite games of the year. If you are a Microsoft fan, I'm sorry. I have an Xbox 360 and an Xbox One. I play them, but I didn't really play any brand new games this year on either of them. And I know there was stuff out for it. I know there was Titanfall. I know there was um, Destiny. I really want to play Destiny. Uh, Master Chief Collection, which I will actually probably be playing by next week after I get some GameStop cards from my relatives. But right now, I'm not playing anything. Sony fans, I originally was going to say you're out of luck also, but uh, one of the games on my list just released for PlayStation 4, so you're in luck. One of the games is on PlayStation 4. I don't own a PlayStation anything right now. I had a PS1 a long time ago, and I actually traded it in for a Game Boy Advance. Right now, I don't know if I have anything against Sony per se, but I had a little bit of a grudge with them when I was in high school, and I'm, I could do a whole episode about that. It was stupid. I was young. doesn't matter. I if, if I ever not have a shitty job, I will go out and buy a PlayStation 4 to add to my current gen collection. So no offense to Sony people. Nintendo fans, you're in for a fucking treat because all five of the games that are on my list are on Wii U. And one is on also 3DS. You can guess what that is. You're you're just in luck. You're just it's going to be a good time for you or, you know, maybe I'm just that boring that no one gives a shit. <laughs> but before I got to the video game stuff, I really wanted to talk about a movie, and I was, the next ca uh, the next nerd cast is going to be about movies that I liked this year that came out. This one I I really wanted I really wanted to talk about it, and everyone's talking about it. The interview. If you don't know, I don't know where the fuck you've been, but if you don't know, the interview is a comedy starring Seth Rogen and James Franco about uh, a journalist or two. I don't know if they're both journalists in the movie, but I know uh, one of them is a journalist, who are drafted by the CEA, or CEA, CIA, to go kill Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea. I almost said South Korea. That would have been a fuck-up. Even though Team America uh, World Police, was that what it was called? Like, ten years ago, more than ten years ago, had them, like, killing Kim Jong-il, and he turned into an alien bug or whatever, they never got any... Uh, shit for it from the country other than like some half ass whiny declaration or whatever but uh, they got a t uh, Sony Pictures got attacked and their emails hacked and a bunch of like movie details that I actually heard about that first I was like ooh movie details Super Mario Brothers movie and then I found out later that they had their um like s like kind of racist emails about the president like released so that's <laughs> I found that out after the video game movie stuff, so that's kind of funny. Then they also made death threats. Whoever hacked the accounts made death threats 
against movie theaters and say, if you show it, we'll, we'll kill you and we'll blow it up and it's going to be 9-11 proportions. Like, I kind of doubt that, but okay. And Sony pulled the picture. They pulled it and it's not going to be out on Christmas. And I even heard a rumor today, I don't know if this is true, that they're not even going to release it on DVD. Uh, that's so fucking stupid. I mean, I kind of get that if there were attack, everybody would be like, you were warned and you, you're you responsible for those people's deaths. And it's the same people who are like, oh, it's freedom and you should show the movie. And I think that they should show it. I don't think that the threat's credible. I mean, Homeland Security said it's not credible. But I know if even one person gets killed, it'll be a nightmare for Sony Pictures and for the movie theater as well. So I get that. But I... Now... They don't release it on DVD. That's insane. Maybe I'm I can halfway agree with the decision to not release it in theaters. But and now this may even result. I don't know if it's as a result, but part of the emails also was that Andrew Garfield may not be playing Spider Man anymore. And if you know me, I'm a huge fucking Spider Man fan, and that I liked him as Spider Man a lot. I really liked him as Spider Man. If you don't your opinion, whatever, but I did, and that's really disappointing for me if that's true. Amazing Spider-Man 2, half of the reason I like that movie so much, and I kind of defend it against people, because a lot of people piss on it, is because it's an arc that leads to a bigger story. That movie's about Gwen Stacy and Peter, that is that movie. And the Rhino cameo and the Green Goblin getting shoehorned, and I admit that he was shoehorned into there was part of a bigger arcing story, and since I'm used to anime and comics, I'm used to bigger arcing stories. So, news that he's not going to be Spider-Man, and they're not going to make a third movie, maybe. Now, this is rumor, but it's starting to look like it may be more than rumor. That's really disappointing. But yeah, the interview is not going to be in theaters. I don't even know if I was going to go see it. Like, I don't... I like Seth Rogen and James Franco. I loved Pineapple Express. I liked the end. But I... I, I, I haven't even seen the new Hobbit movie yet, so I just, maybe is the best word, like, I don't know, like, I can't say I wasn't, but I can't say I was, but now if they put it back in the theaters, I definitely will. Uh, half of me wants to say that that is the point, that maybe they're going to put it out, and it's a big publicity stunt, but it's, I don't think they would have theaters threatened, not, not necessarily the theater threatening, but the decisions made as a result of those, but I don't think so, because the theaters were the ones not showing the movie at first, so that's, it's probably, <laughs> it's really unlikely it's a publicity stunt. I shouldn't talk about any more movie stuff, let's move on. So, video games. This is the first episode, but also an end of the year show. Video games. What video games did I play? I played a shit ton of video games, but a lot of them came out last year. I played Link Between Worlds, and even Link to the Past, which came out like 20 years ago. So I never played Link to the Past. I'm more of a late-blooming Zelda fan. I played Twilight Princess as the first one I ever beat, when the only game before that I played was the NES game. I've sort of begun trying to catch up on that. I played, I tried to play through Ocarina and Virtual Console on the Wii. I never made it through. When it came out on 3DS, I finally beat it. I really enjoyed that game. Skyward Sword was one of my favorite games when it came out. Wind Waker HD is my favorite Zelda game. I love, love, love that game. And I feel like that came out at the right time in my life, too, because when Twilight Princess came out, which I really like, I was wanting that gritty, dark Zelda. I think everybody was. And everybody hated Wind Waker when it came out. I didn't, because I... I think I had a GameCube when it came out. But, like I said, I wasn't into Zelda at the time, so I didn't buy it. And at that time, I was all, like, macho, and I have to... I have to project machoism, and I can't possibly... Get this kitty game. Wind Waker coming out now, or last year rather, when I was 29 as opposed to 19, was just, it was just the perfect time. It just, it just was. Most of the games that weren't these five games are not new. There might have been some indie games here and there other than the one on my list. So that leads into the other new game that I got, or the, not the other one. That comes the first uh, game on the list, and these are in no particular order. I mean, obviously some of them are better than the others, and... Especially the top three that I'm going to name, I can't decide which one I like more. I know which one I'm going to play the most. First game on the list, though, Hyrule Warriors. I wasn't sure if I was going to like this game or not. I really I didn't know what to think of it when I first saw it. I thought it was going to be fun. I thought I might wait to get it. But as more and more and more 
got revealed more characters, more weapons, more everything about it. I needed it. I, I had to have it. I ended up pre-ordering it and getting it day one, and I got uh, a Twilight Princess outfit. So Hyrule Warriors, for those of you who don't know, was made by Koei Tecmo, who make uh, the Dynasty Warriors series. And they did another crossover with Gundam, and then I think they did a crossover with something, another franchise I'm not even familiar with. But they decided, Nintendo decided to rent Zelda out to them, and they did a Zelda game that wasn't in the continuity, technically, but has a combination of the Hyrule Warriors, a combination of the Legend of Zelda and the Dynasty Warrior control schemes in it. Uh, you could actually fight as a Dynasty Warrior control scheme, but... Everybody who has that, I know they picked the Zelda control theme scheme. The basic premise of the game is you pick a character. There's a, there's, a, there's a legend mode that actually makes you pick certain characters. I gotta let somebody in. I think the cat's trying to get in. Come on, Mr. Cats. Mr. Kitty Cat. What are you doing, Kiki? Mulder, did you want to do the, the nerd cast with me? So you have a legend mode, and they make you pick from, like, a handful of characters... And as the game goes on, you unlock more characters, you unlock more weapons, and eventually you unlock free mode where you can choose anybody for any mission. You're basically, where Zelda is puzzle-based, and you're fighting usually one to maybe three or four enemies, you usually want to take on one at a time. This one you're taking on dozens, or in some instances, hundreds of enemies, and your uh, attacks are just devastating as you need them to be, and there's such a huge array of, of attack. Like, you can build up, you have a special meter that you build up, but you also have a magic meter, and when you build the magic meter up, it makes you go into hyper mode, and then you can either let that meter run out, and you do some sort of radial super damaging move, or you can do a super, uh, like a special magic attack with the same command as you use your normal special attack. Normal special attack, that's funny. And when you use that magic special attack, you'll actually bring bosses to their knees, because usually they have like a weak a weak spot or a weak uh, moment where you can bring down this uh, pie chart of damage, and then you'll do this super move that's only for like bosses or mini bosses. And some of the large bosses, like Dodongo and whatnot, have your own animations per character for damaging that type of boss. It's, it's really cool, like the, the detail put into the animations is really breathtaking sometimes. Like, that's most of this game is just fanfare. The the gameplay can get repetitive, but they've done a pretty good job keeping it uh, fresh. They have some DLC packs put out for it. The, my only, my biggest problem is maybe the repetition. The, the, the adventure mode in it can get really dull. Like, you have to take breaks from adventure mode. Like, I'm trying to unlock all these uh, outfits, and a lot of them that you unlock via adventure mode are just, are just uh, palette swaps, which is kind of annoying because you go through all this effort and you get Ganondorf with a green outfit, and I spent a lot of time trying to unlock that, and that was a really disappointing. There are some of the palette swaps that I really like. Rudos, the uh, Zora queen, or princess, her, her out, I really like her outfit. Hers was worth it. And it's just darker blue and makes her body look more like a dress than part of her body. And it, I really like that outfit. I did a review for Hyrule Warriors on my uh, blog. Uh, right now it's trimmerdeath.blogspot.com. I'm going to try to turn that into a full-fledged website during my winter break, as it were, because I'm off from work for quite a while. The 2nd of January falls on a Friday, so they just gave us the day off. They're making us use a vacation day. If we, well, I think we have to, but that doesn't matter. Regardless, yes, Hyrule Warriors, good good game. If you have the other games on this list, go, go pick up a copy. It's not for everybody, but if you, if you love Zelda, the fanfare, the Zelda fanfare is enough just for the price of admission. Uh, the gameplay is good enough. There are some stra uh, strategic elements to it as far as keep getting, capturing the keeps and defeating the bosses and whatnot. It's not just a brainless. I thought I thought it was going to be brainless button mashing, but it, and some of it is brainless button button mashing. But there's a lot more uh, intelligence that went into this game than I originally 
uh, suspect. Uh, there's a little puzzle solving, but I think that's one other weakness of the game. They put puzzle solving a structure in there, like where you can bomb certain things and you can open doors, but it seems like they used all that up, like in the first couple missions, and they never really use its potential, I think. Like, you can use the claw shot to get up to higher places, but there's only a handful of places to do that. I only recently used a claw shot on Adventure Mode to actually get something. There was a Skulltula. That's how I pronounce it, Skulltula. I don't know if it's Skull... I hear people say Skulltola, but I think... But it's supposed to be Skull and Tarantula, I'm, I'm assuming, so I just call it Skulltula. My friend Zelderman, who I'm sh sure will be on this eventually... Calls it a Skulltula. So yeah, uh, pick it up. Tell me what you think about Hyrule Warriors in the comments. If you hate it, if you love it. The next item on the list is an indie game. It is on Wii U, uh, 3DS, and now PS4. And it's uh, Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. Oh my god, Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. And I heard about this game. I was not that enthused about getting it i i didn't even give to the kickstarter if anybody from yacht clubs listening i thoroughly apologize for that now that i've played it i i really wish i had because there are some neat rewards uh with that kickstarter shovel knight is a 2d side scrolling platformer that takes the best elements of the super mario brothers series mega man and ducktales if you believe it or not and just combine it into this perfect love letter to 8 and 16-bit era gaming it's for the music i bought the soundtrack i never buy game soundtracks and i bought the soundtrack because it is that goddamned good requiem of the shield knight is my fucking jam that song it makes me sad it makes me physically sad to listen to that song and it's just chip tunes it's oh they do such a good job the maneuvering controls feel more or less like Mega Man. Even though you don't shoot anything from the get-go, you can get an upgrade to shoot stuff. But And um, as far as DuckTales is concerned, you can put your shovel downward, and I think there's a code you can put in to bounce like you would in DuckTales. But you can bounce on enemies, but not on the ground. And there's uh, a, a ton of treasure to collect, and you can buy new outfits, and you can buy upgrades. You can go to the Troutple King, who is a trout and apple hybrid. It sounds ridiculous, but you meet... One of his cult followers at the beginning in the first town that you go to. I love that little that first little town you go to. You go back to it over and over again. And the Troutpool King will fill up the chalice that you get eventually with something that'll refill your health or refill your item meter. And your items act like uh Castlevania items. There's something that acts like the axe. It's like an anchor actually. And oh, uh, it's just it's everything that I grew up with perfectly melded together. It I think a lot of people would be mad if it got Game of the Year on, say, IGN or something, because it is a smaller game, and it's it's not it's not super expansive like say GTA five or whatever, which I haven't played. Um I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. I haven't played a Grand Theft Auto game extensively since GTA two. I played three and a little four I didn't own them, so, and I always meant to get her. It's not like I hate the series or anything, I just never got around to buying them, because I have a limited amount of time, and I don't have that much, I don't have that much time to play everything that's out there, so I have to pick and choose. And GTA is just something that I've wanted to play more of, but just, I always end up just playing a tidbit of it, and then moving on to something else. And if if that if that if I'm insane for that, I, I apologize. I know there's I know there's always like a good game series or two that everybody has that they haven't played but they want to. And GTA is that for me. For the longest time it was Fallout, but I played the shit out of Fallout 3 a couple years ago. And I love that fucking game. But back to Shovel Knight, one of one of the things and I meant to talk about this with Hyrule Warriors. And I know it's on the tip of everybody's tongue who's into gaming, who pays attention to stuff, I always seem to think about Feminist Frequencies videos when I play games now. Because I've watched, like, two or three of them. It's no no, no offense to, uh, if I can get her name right, Anidia Sarkazian. If I'm getting that name wrong, I apologize. But she brought my attention to a lot of this stuff. Now, I don't agree with 100% of the things she says. I'm I'm in agreement with probably about 70% of the things she say, says. I think she's been a little she was a little disrespectful in the videos to to say like 
Shigeru Miyamoto and whatnot. I, I know not personally, but she said the developers of, like, the Zelda series, like, doubled down on Princess Kidnapping. And, that, and that's really, I think, really mean-spirited. I, I could see something like Fat Princess. No offense to people who make Fat Princess. The, you have to admit, the concept, so, you can't see that concept of guys ch toting around a fat lady and have it not be kind of offensive to some people. I don't care. I, I haven't played the game. I'm not saying it's bad. But so something like Zelda... I, I'm not saying it's sacred. I don't even like dislike her criticisms of it. Um, hell, I loved seeing all these female characters show up, Pyro Warriors, and I feel like they kind of. I don't think they took her advice into account necessarily, but I just like seeing that. But yeah, I think she gets a little too mean about it sometimes, and I feel like she doesn't give enough credit to where people do stuff right. But I do feel like what she says, there's a point in there, like. Yes, Nintendo has been unoriginal, with Princess Peach getting kidnapped a zillion times. And it was funny for a little while, because, like, especially Mario Brothers 3, because it hadn't happened since the first game, at least in the U.S. It was just funny to see her kidnapped again, and then it happened again, and again, and again, and again. It gets, it gets old, but it's also... If people take her advice into account, like, at least the bare bones of her advice, with women being portrayed as something more than sex objects or damsels there's nothing but originality that can result from storyline with shovel knight i had that in the back of my head the whole time i was playing it it was like oh shield knight which is the lady knight is kidnapped except she sort of wasn't and i'm not gonna ruin the ending of the game and i'm not sure if that was like yet another trope and i shouldn't be thinking about this i i i, I enjoyed the game i have no criticisms for the game at all. I literally, like, with Higher Warriors, I had a couple of negative things to say. I have nothing to criticize on Shovel Knight. It's perfect. And yet, I feel like it was a little bit progressive because Shield Knight... Okay, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying not to spoil this. Spoiler alert for, like, the next 30 seconds. Close your ears if you haven't played the end of the game. At the end of the game, Shield Knight kind of saves the day. And you have to use... And she has to protect you. And she's almost, like, the stronger character at the end, even though she's not playable, and you're given the impression that she was kidnapped the whole time. Okay, spoiler over. So I feel like she Shovel Knight kind of tried a little bit to be more progressive with stuff like that, and honestly, I would love to see, see a Shield Knight game. And at first, maybe she can only reflect uh, attacks, but then she gets better equipment as time goes on and she can attack herself, but that I think that would be an interesting game if they did a sequel rather than doing Shovel Knight 2. I could go on, I could do a whole podcast about what I like about those feminist frequency videos, what I dislike, because I know a lot of the gaming community is just like, fuck her, fuck that stupid bitch, let's make pictures of Mario raping the fuck out of her, and it's, it's, first off, if you, if you're a person who makes drawings like that, I know I say fuck and shit and dick and pussy all the time, but I don't need your listenership. If you, show a woman getting sexually violated and you think that's fucking funny, I don't fuck you, okay? Go 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 to your go to your mother or your sister or fucking Odin forbid your daughter and say, hey, I think it's okay to make fun of a real person getting sexually assaulted. Not in not in not in some sort of existential or not serious way, like, oh, I'm on Halo, I'm teabagging the shit out of you, I'm raping this guy, just, just take this shit. We're not talking about that, we're talking about a per a individual person actually getting sexually assaulted. No, just, like, I don't care if you disagree with her. Like I said, I agree with some of the stuff she says, and I disagree with some of the other stuff, but I love that she started the conversation. But unfortunately, and if you've been on any online anything in video games with the exclusion of Nintendo stuff, you know the type of guys who are doing shit like that. The guys who sit around and call you, and I'm, I'm saying this, I'll go ahead and not, I'll go ahead and not say it for now. I want to say 
I'm gonna save the homophobic and racial slurs, or if I'm directly quoting somebody. So yeah, Shovel Knight, it's amazing. I don't know what else I can say about it. I could go level by level and tell you about all the great things and the bosses that are, that are all knights, by the way. So it, it's like Mega Man, how they're all robots, and it's Woodman, except it's like Tinker Knight, and it's, uh, it's just... It's delightful. And unlike the other games on this list, it's cheap. It's like 15 bucks. Go get it. Like, right now. Like, pause this, go get it, and beat off all over your controller or 3DS. Or don't, because it, it's sticky, so... Anyway, uh, speaking of things to beat off to, <laughs> third game on the list is Wii U Exclusive, and a lot of people are really fucking pissed about that. Because the first game in the series, uh, which is now also on Wii U, and you get free with the sequel, was on 360 and PS3. I played it on 360. I got I came late in the game. I think I played it over a year after it came out. But I downloaded the demo, and I really liked it, and I found it cheap used. And I was like, I'm going to give Bayonetta a try. And it was really good. It, it did things that I didn't expect. Not just the sexually charged fighting style stuff, but also how they took... Judeo-Christian uh, religion and just spun it on its head and I don't see how that I guess if the game were more popular it would have gotten a lot of shit from soccer moms and fundamentalist Christians but it it wasn't that popular though it was an, an amazing game and everyone who's played it loves it that's a fact that's just a fact if you if you if you played it and you didn't like it you're just lying because my opinion's fact snark they announced Bayonetta 2 coming out. I was blown away. I was caught off guard by this. And it was like, Wii U exclusive. And I'm like, I've got a Wii U. <laughs> so, and then I, pre and I was not going to pre-order this game. I was, I was determined to not spend as much money this fall as I did on games. I was like, I'm going to get it for Christmas with my GameStop cards. I'm going to get Master Chief Collection instead. And then I think IGN Nintendo Voice Chat. And once again, I don't know how big my listenership will ever be, but any of the guys from that are listening to this, no insult towards you guys, but one of you guys said that this game will not sell well. And it might have been, I, I take that back, it might have been Joystick. And I don't listen to Joystick that much anymore. I could do a whole podcast on why I occasionally listen to Joystick when I used to listen to it nonstop. But one of them said, this game's not going to sell well. Too bad, because it's going to be great. I wasn't, like, pissed off by that, but I knew they were probably right. And I wanted to do my part to not make that true. So I pre-ordered Bayonetta 1 and 2, and I don't regret it. Bayonetta 2 is great. The gameplay, the presentation, the graphics, the personality, just everything about it. Everything about it is great. There's very few thing, negative things I can say about it. The story is interesting, and it has actually some twists I didn't expect. And then untwists some of that because it misleads you a little bit i loved going into hell and fighting demons inferno because you only fought angels in the first game and i love that you were fighting demons so it's just all of that nintendo costumes are great the nintendo fan service is amazing in that game just oh like i i i'm not even naming anything specific about it okay it's an action game it's like devil may cry you have a dodge mechanic that if you dodge at the right time, right before an attack hits you, you go into witch time, where, <clears throat> by witch, I mean, like, brooms and pointed hats witch, because Bayonetta is a witch. Witch time slows everything down so you can get extra hits in on your enemies. And you build up your meter enough, you get Umbrin Climax. Because there's lots of sexual stuff in this game. Climax. Boner alert. So, <clears throat> you once you get Umber and Climax, you just unleash these massive demonic powers on to your enemies, and the limbs of the demons you control like come out of portholes and just rip things apart, and it's amazing. And if you're uh, using the Princess Peach or Daisy outfits, you actually have Bowser's hands and feet uh, come through the portals, which is just amazing. If you haven't played the first one, like I said, it comes free with Bayonetta 2. If you're a hardcore Nintendo fanboy, you don't, or girl, sorry, or girl, and you haven't played anything on 360 or, or PlayStation 3 or 4, Xbox One, get this game, play through the first one, play through the second one. I, where I said Hyrule Warriors, you, it, it, it's not everyone's cup of tea. This is, unless, and this is the point where I 
go and talk about feminist frequency stuff again. I don't want to keep doing that. I'm not going to do that all the time. I have no clue what she thinks about this game or her the group that makes the videos. I honestly don't want to know because it would kind of ruin it. No offense to her. I see Bayonetta as an independent, confident woman who's comfortable with her sexuality. Her sexuality drives pompous angels insane and pisses them off, and then she decapitates them. It's great. Uh, her outfit's made out of hair, and when she uses up her hair powers, which her hair is also used to bind demons, I know it sounds weird, but it looks really cool visually. Whenever she uses up her hair powers, her clothes come off, and she's basically in a bathing suit. Uh, a swimming suit. It's not as revealing as you think it is at first. At first you're like, oh my god, she just got naked. And then you realize, oh, she's not really that naked. And with the Nintendo outfits, none of that happens. Like, your Samus outfit, which is my favorite outfit out of all of them, none of that happens. It's just that she stays the same, which is fine. And I get that she is to some extent a sex... I would, I would refer her to her more as a sex symbol than a sex object. She saves a guy in distress in the first game over and over again. She's not a damsel. She's not background. She's the main character. She's awesome. She's British. And I'm afraid that some of the Feminist Frequency fans might be like, well, she takes her clothes off and that's objectifying her, so fuck this game. I'm not, I'm not speaking for them. I don't know what they think. And I kind of don't care in this front because as somebody who gives a shit about women and their struggle for equality in the view of everybody, especially men, I'm okay with this game. Like, they're not, Bayonetta is not being slapped around by some guy or shot in the face because she's too loud, like in Grand Theft Auto. No, th no offense to Rockstar, they do what they do because it makes money and it's fun, but there are aspects of it I don't necessarily like. <clears throat> when I do get around to playing it a little bit that I play it. I don't not play it because of stuff like that. I don't not play it because I don't have the fucking time <laughs> to play everything. But no, this game this game's amazing. You should you should get it. Like if you have a Wii U, there's no reason not to have this game. And I wish more people had played it. And I w and I I if you are hesitant about getting a Wii U because you're worried about not enough mature games, though I quote unquote mature games, <clears throat> I would honestly steer you towards this game and Zombie U, and if you haven't gotten Resident Evil Revelations, I think the best version of it is on Wii U. And all the games that are family-friendly are so really fun. Like, I don't... And maybe because I'm a little older and I'm not into the whole, oh, I gotta be macho, so I have to have people getting their heads blown off. Like, no, I love throwing shells at people and Mario Kart, and Super Mario 3D World is an amazing game and the best Mario multiplayer experience that there is. You shouldn't let that hold you down. Like if you're in your early 20s or late teens and you're worried about your friends seeing you as not macho, eventually they'll get over that. And you can play these games on your own and they're really, really fun. Like I didn't play Mario games when I was in high school. I stopped and I really regret it because the N64 era was amazing, and I missed out on so much shit because I had that attitude. Though, to my defense, I did have a Dreamcast, and I played Sonic Adventure, and Choo Choo Rock, and all sorts of crazy shit. That was not macho. And I was more of a Sega guy at the time. I was still like, Twisted Metal, which is not a bad series necessarily. Bayonetta 2 could be a reason for you to get a Wii U, and I could give you tons of other games. Everybody could give you tons of other games that are amazing on the Wii U, and I'm not here to sell a Wii U. I don't I honestly don't care if you individually buy one, but if you're holding off on one because you don't think it has games that are up your alley, I I would cons I, I would t I would urge you to strongly consider to get one, and I'll strongly consider getting a PS4 eventually. <laughs> eventually. Also, also on the Bayonetta front, it's really gory. Like it's really really violent. Like you even instead of doing your Umbrian climax. You could do a torture trap, which is from the first one, where you can, like, throw an angel on a treadmill, and there's, like, spiky rollers behind them, and she just kicks them into it, and just, oh, it goes everywhere. It's so brutal, and it's so amazing, her her snark and personality as she dispatches her enemies. It's, it's wonderful. It's such a wonderful game. So, highly recommended. Game I played this year, Bayonetta 2. Go get it. Next game on the list... I was really, I, 
these top three games are all tied. I this is the second of the top three. And I really wanted to I really wanted to have a numbered list and say number five, number four, but I I can't I can't do it with these three. I I, I just can't. Smash Brothers for Wii U. I played the 3DS demo, it was alright. I liked it. Man, the game on Wii U is so fucking amazing. And I, I played Brawl for a couple months after it came out, and the on lack of online really, really brought me down. And when I say lack of online, you're going to be like, well, you we, yeah, had online, you could have played online. No, I mean online that actually <laughs> worked. It, it, it didn't work. It just did not work. And that sucks. Like, that, I was so looking forward to Smash Online, and Brawl... I had Sonic was in it, and Sonic's one of my favorite characters, and I could get into a whole conversation about Sonic's history and how he's disappointed me and as of late, but that's a different that's different uh time altogether. But I was so excited. Sonic's in it, and I kinda liked Pitt being in it because he hadn't been in a game for a long time, and I get it, and Subspace Emissaries is amazing, and I played through classic mode and Unlocked all the characters, because they were actually hard to unlock on that one. And then I tried to play online, I played like, maybe five games online, and it just wouldn't load. Right before the Nintendo Network for Wii, or whatever you call it, went out forever, uh, I tried to play it again, it just nothing, just nothing. And maybe because no one was on there, but even when people were on there, nothing. Mario Kart Wii had a decent uh, online. How did this not? I mean, I know it's a fighting game, but this is, and then, I love Nintendo, but this goes into the whole problem Nintendo had with the Wii, which was, they didn't expect online to be as big as it was, and I don't understand how that was possible. I know Xbox Live was in its infancy when the Wii came out, but it, ugh. Anyway, so I got this game, and the first online game I played with my friend Zelda Man was shitty as fuck glitchy and and ooh, 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 ooh. and I, I was like oh my god they fucked this up again no no and then the second game was twice as better and then the third game was perfect and then three-fourths of the game have been fine three-fourths of the games have been fine maybe an eighth is a little touchy and then one eighth is like unplayable and that's connection stuff that's not nintendo's fault I was so happy when I finally, by the third game when it was playing fine and we were kicking a little ass, I was really happy. So the, the rest of the game, great, great, great roster. I'm playing with new characters. I haven't even touched Sonic hardly, and he was my jam in Brawl. And Luigi was my jam in Melee, but I've barely touched them. I'm playing with Shulk a lot, and I... I haven't beat Xenoblade Chronicles yet, but I've played like 70 hours of it. I'm working on beating it. Please, please forgive me. It's a great game. I love it. But during winter break, I will I will play Xenoblade to the end. I just fought Eggle for the first time. So if you know where that is in the game, you know how far along I am. And uh, just, wow. Just Subspace Emissary not being in the game is fine. But considering how they tightened everything up. And the graphics are so polished. And there are so many other modes. It's okay. Like, I love Subspace Animus Area. I liked how it was a little story mode. I felt like sometimes the character selection was a little wonky. Because it was like, I'm pointing at a guy in a cinematic scene. And don't screw up picking someone. I don't know. Like, it, it always seemed weird to me when you picked a character in that. I'm a little uh, sad that Taboo didn't show back up in this one. And maybe if you play it on, like... 10 difficulty because I haven't. I tried playing it on 7 today and I got my ass whipped and had to go back down to 6. But I was using a character. I wasn't. Well, no, I was using Shulk. So yeah, I just got my ass kicked. <laughs> so I'm not quite up to 7 yet. Crazy, crazy order orders and master orders are really cool. I like mixing things up like that and unlocking stuff that way. I'm trying to get through all star mode right now. I beat classic mode with every character. This classic mode is amazing now. I remember before it was like. Shulk versus Metal Mario, and you just had this a set ten matches or whatever, seven matches. Now it's like here are these trophies on a board, and here's the prizes you'll get if you defeat them. And I'm like, I want this trophy, or I want this customization. And I like the choice. I like 
choosing what type of battle I'm going to fight. That's really cool. Uh, they don't have metal fights very often now, it seems, which is weird. I guess I guess they do do that on um, Master Orders, but I like having the choice in Classic Mode to do that. All-Star Mode's annoying. <laughs> All-Star mo Mode is always annoying because it's one life, and it's... Uh... If you could turn items off in All-Star Mode, I wouldn't mind it. And I love items, but I am so sick of someone throwing that goddamned beetle at me and dragging me off the screen. Or the Galaga ship, or whatever. Just, uh, just let me win. It's on easy, too. And I shouldn't... It, it sucks because it takes... Sometimes, it doesn't take that long to get through it with one character, but when I spend, like, 25 minutes with one character, it's, it can get annoying. That's so small gripe. I wish you could turn items off on all-star mode. I wish you could do only uh omega stages. Um so so the other features, speaking of omega stages, eight player smash is fun. I thought it was gonna be bullshit, but it's fun. And they use it in classic mode and it's interesting. Sometimes it is bullshit, but they take away most of the stages. And one of the things I find annoying is I built a big stage for eight player smash and I can't use it. They don't let you use custom pl custom uh, maps, or not maps, stages in 8-player, and that's just, um, that's just annoying. I don't know. Then Smash Tour, a lot of people give Smash Tour shit, like, this is the worst part of the game, Smash Tour! It's a board game, it's random, I like it. I really like it. I like playing it by myself, I like playing it with people, it's random, it's crazy, it's fun. I like it. I don't I don't know. Like I don't know. I don't know why people don't like it so much. Some of them can't understand it, but I'd explain it like it's a board game. It's like Mario Party but with Smash. And it really it really is. Take that with whatever grain of salt or sugar that you will, whether you like Mario Party's randomness or not. But it's not as unfair as Mario Party where at the end it's like you sucked the most. Here's a star. It doesn't do that. It's you're at the end of the game. Here's all the characters you collected. Beats a mass. And it's 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 fun. Uh, what other modes? We've got Stadium again. Uh, they got w rid of the wireframe people in exchange for the Mii Fighters, because you can make a Mii Fighter. Uh, I like using the Mii Fighters more than I thought. I've, I've got five of them right now. And then there's Amiibo support. And Mii Fighters and Amiibo and custom characters all have moves you can alter. You can make Mario's fireball faster or bigger or... Toon, Toon Link has a move now where I can move to the side whenever I do his up B and just just stuff like that like like Yoshi turns into a really big really slow egg that's really powerful instead of a really fast one that kind of hurts you there's all sorts of little bitty customizations that you can do now but you can turn those characters on and off you cannot use them online you can't use me fighters online which I find really annoying you could make the three types of me fighters have default moves and put them online. I don't know why that's an issue. Because I really like my gunner. My trimmer shot, as it were. So, that's fun. The amiibo, I didn't think I was going to like that uh, support for it. I honestly just want the figures. Because they're fucking awesome. Just, uh, like, I really like the figures. It's actually really fun training your amiibo. You get uh, rewards for it, too. You get, like, money and stuff. You have to rescan them in the amiibo screen to get the rewards. You can't... It doesn't just get added to your whatever because I guess if you can take your amiibo to other people's houses and rack up rewards on other people's Wii U's and then you have to p take it back home and cash that in. So that's that's why it works that way, which I'm okay with. It's it's a practicality thing, not a it's not that big of a deal. I don't mind rescanning them in. Uh, and I only know one other person with a Wii U personally. I've known three or four who are talking about getting one, including my stepbrother, my sister, my, my stepbrother. I don't have a, well, I do have a stepbrother now, but technically I have a stepbrother, but we've only been, I've only had him for like, oh, uh, what, like five or six months, and he's like 14. My two brother, two of my brother-in-laws, my sister, my friend Three Dozer, all talk about getting Wii U's. My friend Zelderman already has one, if you couldn't tell by his name. But he doesn't have Smash. I don't think he's going to buy it anytime soon. I don't really go to his house uh, very often because we work different shifts and it's just impractical. He doesn't have Smash anyway, so for this instance, it's not an issue. But but yeah, the Amiibo support's pretty fun. Uh, if you have one and you haven't used it at all I, and you have a Smash, go ahead. Go ahead and just try it on for size. 
So yeah, Smash Brothers for Wii U is amazing. It's it's better than I thought it'd be. If you were bored by Brawl, this might actually make you happy. If if you're a fan of Melee and not Brawl, this might be the game for you. I wasn't bored by Brawl. It's just not. It's not as good as this. This is just uh like everything about it. And I really wish they had a subspace emissary mode, but it doesn't take that much away from the game. I keep playing it. I can't stop playing it when I pick it up. Except to play the last game on the list, which came out right after my first son was born, Mr. Baby, Mr. Baby X, Mario Kart 8. Holy fucking shit on another man's dick. I love this fucking game. I cannot, like, I liked Mario Kart Wii. I played it for, like, a couple months, and I played it on and off with my friend Three Dozer, who's who loves Mario Kart, even though he doesn't have a Wii or a Wii. And... Oh, like everything that they changed from Wii. Okay, here's my qualms with Mario Kart Wii. The half pipes are fucking annoying. The boosts that they give you aren't worth you being airborne for like two seconds. And, and sometimes you have to do half pipes and it's so goddamn annoying. I thought it was cool at first, but it gets annoying fast when you're like Tony Hawking it all over the place. All that's gone in Mario Kart 8. The motion controls are better. I liked the motion controls in the Wii one. I was like, oh, cool, steering wheel. But I was... It was getting to the point where the inaccuracy was pissing me off. Most of that's fixed in Mario Kart 8. I use the gamepad for motion controls, which is one of my qualms... That leads to one of my qualms with Mario Kart 8, but I'll, I'll get to that at the end. The online was okay. It was decent. It was better than Brawl's. It's so good in Mario Kart 8. It's The tournaments are great. <clears throat> I might have a buck-ass nerd tournament eventually. That's And that depends on how many listens I get. I can tell, I, Obviously, I can tell how many views I get on YouTube. This is going to be YouTube exclusive, so don't, so don't worry about missing out on any episodes. They're all going to be here. But it's so good. The anti-grav, I thought it was just going to be aesthetic. And it was like, cool, anti-grav. But it adds such a such a weird dimension. Like, people drive differently. They want to bump into each other because you boost in anti-grav mo mode instead of slow down or knock people off. You can still knock them off, but it just works differently. The roster is one of the qualms I have because they, did, <clears throat> they didn't put um, Bowser Jr. in there. Yes, the characters in this game are basically placeholders. They don't have movesets like in Smash Brothers, but each character is special to somebody. I like using Luigi and Yoshi and Lakitu, some of the Koopalings I like using. And recently I've been using my Mii with a Samus outfit that I unlocked with my Amiibo. In case you didn't know, you can unlock outfits on Mario Kart 8 with certain Amiibo. Uh, make sure that you have the right Amiibo to unlock stuff, because some of them don't. But Diddy Kong's been around on Mario Kart for a really long time, and they only have one Donkey Kong character, which is the man himself, Donkey Kong. Bowser Jr., I didn't really care that much about him not being in it, and we had all the other Koopalings, but some people were really pissed off about that. Diddy Kong, I get. I'd never use him, but I, I get that, because he's been around since Donkey Kong Country, and he was the only other Donkey Kong character that should have been in the game, but even with the DLC, he's not going to be in, so, oh, and Dry Bones, people, I use Dry Bones a lot, so I get why people were pissed off about that, Dry Bowser is making a return with the next DLC pack, speaking of DLC, the first DLC pack, oh, that's, that is the best DLC pack Nintendo has done, the courses are great, the Excite Bike one's hilarious, the, they actually made Wario's mind, or the uh, Wario's mind, decent. Like I hated that level. I hated that level. It was too narrow. I couldn't get the jumps right sometimes. Most of the time, the minecarts knocked you off, flipped you off the side. Back when the Lakitu took forever to put you back on the track in Mario Kart Wii, but this one, the minecarts boost you. That jump is fixed. It do, it's not like two people land. Everybody seems to land. It's amazing. It's amazing. But the best thing is Hyrule Circuit, and Link is playable, and he has an Epona bike. I don't use the Epona bike because it's a sports bike, and it takes those corners really tight when you drift. It's hard to use. Supposedly, if you get good at using a sports bike, it's, like, the best thing ever. But I'm not good at it, so 
But Link being in the game is great. Only reason I haven't used him more is because everybody online's using him. And I got my Samus outfit, so I I'm using that. But Hyrule Circuit is so cool, and it's basically testing the grounds for what I think is going to be Nintendo Kart. I think the next game system, which I suspect may even be both portable and a home console at the same time, I think that game is going to be called Nintendo Kart. That's the next step. They went from, like, the first, like, each game had a step, excluding the portable ones. You had Super Mario Kart that started it all, Mario 64 that ushered in 3D stages that weren't flat, Double Dash that had, which a lot of people shit on Double Dash. I love Double Dash. It was the first Mario Kart I actually got really into. I love Double Dash. So if you don't like it, I don't know. I don't like Mario Kart 64 that much, so there. It's not, I'm not saying it's bad. I just love Double Dash more. Double Dash had different carts. Like, you actually could choose different carts. And then they had the special abilities, which they got rid of later, which I think is a disappointment. They had these really dynamic stages that Mario Kart 64 lacked, I felt. DK Mountain's amazing. Baby Park, which I uh, I really wish that would return in the next DLC pack. That, that level's so simple, but so insane. And then uh, Mario Kart Wii had Decent Online. And this one was HD, and they had the Antigrav. The, ne- the next logical step, they can't. They, you've already done HD, you can't do HD as the major step twice. Your online is near perfect. You can't do anything but new with that. And Mario Kart's not like Call of Duty, where they can do basically the same game and be like, here you go, brah. COD, brah. I'm, I'm, if you like COD, <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Uh, I plan on playing a couple COD games the next year, so don't, don't think I'm... If, if the games suck when I play them, because I've only played, like, one of them, and it was okay, I guess. Uh, I don't remember which one it was. It came, the one or whatever came out in, like, 2007. I played a little bit. Nintendo doesn't rehash that badly. They like, always bring something new to the table, except with, like, the Mario Party series and some of the sports games. But Mario Kart, they always bring something new to the table. Nintendo Kart is it. It's going to be courses that are themed, like Kirby and more... Zelda stages, and more F-Zero stages, and a Metroid stage, and it's just going to become Nintendo Kart, and I'm okay with that. I'm really, really okay with that. I would love to see a Metroid-themed stage on Brinstar, or on a ship or something, and have Ridley attack you, or be even be a character that you play with. Hell, I wouldn't even mind seeing boss racers that are giant, and giant weird vehicles like steamrollers, like, you can, you have, uh, what, what, I'm trying to think of a character that hasn't played other than Ridley, or somebody, like, Wart, Wart hasn't been in a Mario game since Mario 2, you could have him, like, a steamroller in a subcom th- theme level, that would be cool. Speaking of Birdo's not in this game either, that's, that's one character that I kind of miss, seeing, running around the track, but that's, that's the next step, but to wrap up, Mario Kart 8 is awesome, online's great. The items were more balanced. I felt like in Mario Kart Wii, they were just crazy. Like, you people would just be getting bullet bills and bullet bills and bullet bills and three red shells. And it was, and then they hacked it. Oh, I didn't even get to that. The Mario Kart Wii, when I'm just sitting there and someone's just throwing literally dozens of blue shells. Just troll. Oh, it was bad. I'm so glad that that hasn't happened in this game. It was so bad at the end of Mario Kart Wii's online. Apparently, you could use a Twilight Princess disc to hack games. I'm not sure how it works, but... Oh, that was fucking annoying. Yes, Mario Kart 8. This is... this. If I had to put a number on it, this is my favorite game for Wii U. But it's probably tied with Smash and Bayonetta. It's... At least for this year. I would say Wind Waker would be tied, too, because Wind Waker HD is amazing. You should go get it. Just get it. Just get it. Friend me. Trimmer Death on... Nintendo Network, I will probably friend you back. I usually don't, but since I'm putting this out there now, maybe becoming some sort of internet uh, personality, I guess? For, like, the dozen people that'll listen to this, go ahead and send me friend requests, follow me. I'll I'll probably friend you back. Um, if I get enough requests for it, and keep in mind, I'll be playing during graveyard shifts, 
because that's when I work. So on the weekends, that's when I play. If you guys want to get a tournament together, just put it in the comments. I say, hey, buckass nerd, blah, 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 blah. I'll probably keep it open for like all of Saturdays. And I'll just end up playing after 11 p.m. or midnight. That's usually when I get on Mario Kart. So I might do that. I'll let you know next podcast. or not. It's not a podcast, but not next episode if I get enough requests for it. Just just do it. Just hit me up. Because I know there aren't a lot of tournaments right now. I know Game Explain still has one going on. Um, and I would do the limited race one too. I hate the unlimited race shit. Because it just depends... Like. If you have nothing to do, you can just play a hundred games, and that's really unfair. I think Go Nintendo did that, and I, I like I love Go Nintendo podcast. You're listening any raw meat cowboy or mom brain. You're you're just the shit. But the tournament they did, <clears throat> unlimited races. It's it, it, I don't like it. I don't like unlimited races. I like keeping it. I'll probably put it at like sixteen races. Like that's not a small amount, but it's not such a huge amount that you can't do it. Um, any any request to make it different? I'm thinking about putting it, I, frantic items on because it's crazy and no one does it. So I know I just bitched about Mario Kart Wii's item balance, but in this instance, for at least the first tournament, yeah, I'll put frantic on because it is pretty fun. Uh, but just not all the time. <laughs> but th yeah, those are the five games that I felt like needed... To be mentioned, those are my five favorite games this year. Hyrule Warriors, Shovel Knight, Bayonetta 2, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, and Mario Kart 8. Go get them. Go get one of them. Go If you if you hate any of those games, let me know about in the comments. Say whatever you want in the comments. Unless you're using homophobic or racial slurs, or, I don't know, talking about sexually assaulting people. I won't, I won't edit it. I just... I won't. If, if it has, I did put some flag words in there, and it might take a day to get approved if it, if you use um, profanity. I don't mind profanity on there, obviously. It's just usually when profanity is put on there, it's trolling, and I want to filter trolls out. I'm actually going to take an active role for as long as I can doing that, but eventually I'm going to have so many episodes where I'm just going to say, fuck it. But I'm not going to have bullying or harassment on the comment section, so don't do not do shit like that. So I don't know if... I guess I'll go ahead and talk about some other video game news. I didn't mean for this podcast to be this long. I said Nerdcast to be that long. But I'll go, I'll go ahead and uh, talk about some other gaming news. Uh, Halo 5 beta starts December 25th. I should be on there. I plan on getting Master Chief Collection Friday. It's Trimmer Death on both Nintendo Network and Xbox Live. TRE... M O R D E T H. Uh, I'll put it in the description for the video. It's also on my. Uh, it's also in the web address of the blog. So for now, anyway. And I'll start accepting friend requests. Usually, if I don't know you, I won't. But um, don't message me all the time. If you see I'm on a game that you're on, send me a request. I sometimes have people that I'm playing with and I can't get on with other people. Uh, I've had people get mad at me, like, hey, bro, bro, I, I make fun of people who say bro. No, I have friends who say bro, so don't, I'm not really insulting you, but they're like, hey, bro, I was on Minecraft, and you didn't join me, and I was playing with somebody else, and they wanted to play with just me, sorry. I accidentally kicked someone out of a game of Minecraft once, I was playing with five people, I thought that was a limit, apparently the limit's like eight, and I was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> and it was one of my wife's work friends and I thought for a split second it was some guy that I that was trolling me from a Halo game and it wasn't and he he was really sad he wasn't mad he was just like saddened by it and that guy recently bought one of my books I have a, a sci-fi novel series that I I've published uh independently um I'll put the web address for that in the description also if you care most you're not here for that, though. Let's, let's face it. You heard about hear about games and shit. So, games and shit. Well, you know what? That's what I'm going to call this segment. From now on, it's called Games and Shit. And then Movies and Shit. So, Games and Shit. Zelda Wii U had a, uh, a little event a couple... Uh, was it a week ago? A week and some change ago. Uh, Miyamoto and Sakurai... Uh, no, not Sakurai. Uh, Ainuma. Miyamoto and Aonuma 
Inuma, Miyamoto and Inuma play Welda, uh, Welda? <laughs> Zelda Wii U. It looks amazing. It looks really good. Now, I I don't want to rip on other people's shows and podcasts. I just like to point out that IGN did a really negative podcast for the the preview and I just I don't know, like I didn't see the necessity for it. I get what some of their what they're saying. Let's get to the good stuff in the preview. It looks gorgeous. It looks gorgeous. The world's giant, which is something a lot of Zelda fans always wanted. Like a lot of us wanted basically a Zelda version of Skyrim. And I don't want Zelda to be like Skyrim because I don't think the story when Skyrim was as good as Zelda stories. I've even seen people insult Zelda. Like I I, I go on IGN a lot, but man, they the commenters on there just vicious and hateful and mean-spirited about anything Nintendo, and I doubt any of them play Zelda games. The world looked amazing. You can Pona controls on her own. You can put her on autopilot and shoot and hit things with your sword uh, without having to deal with steering your horse at the same time, and she'll kind of walk around stuff, which is kind of cool. I like that. A lot of people are like, oh, that's been in Red Dead. I'm like, okay, so that's not necessarily a bad thing obviously but i guess people were just pissy saying nintendo's finally catching up with modern gaming and like skyward sword was a really good game and nobody has done one-to-one sword motions in a game like that before or since no one's even tried no one cares about motion controls now but they kind of should i don't want this game to be like that because i liked wind waker hd so much that i want the pad to be used for stuff like that items and maps and whatnot but i wouldn't mind seeing them make another like an if they made skyward sword hd one to one sword motion again i would be the first in line to buy that but there are things that they did in that game and in twilight princess that nobody else does nobody does story like zelda no one hell they're even like there are games that are critically acclaimed that have shitty stories or have okay, merely okay stories. I hate the negativity because I was personally wowed by that video. It seemed a lie, and a lot of people said it wasn't, but it, it, you had wild horses, and I saw deer running around, and I know they wanted to see villages and stuff, but this this is probably just the sections of the game that are in the wild and open, and you have places that are closer to town. They'll probably have merchants on roads. I didn't even see any roads. I'm sure once you get to roads and whatnot, plus there's 10 months of development left. 9 to 10 months of development left. Do you really think that Nintendo's not going to do anything to this game? I know that's not what they were saying, but it felt like it. It felt just this downpour of hatred towards things they didn't like, which were things that they wanted to see in it. So it wasn't things that they didn't like, it was things that they wanted to see in it. I think it looked really good. It looks beautiful. For what people call an inferior, for what people call inferior hardware, which irritates the hell out of me. I know technically, on a technical level, yes, it's true, but it's not like Wii versus 360. the The advance between Wii U and Xbox One is not as huge. Hell, like Super Mario 3D World and Dead Rising 3 came out very close to each other, and I did reviews on both of those games. At about the same time, uh, on on the blog and Dead Rising Three, for being a, a next gen at the time, but now current gen game, I liked it. I gave it, I think, an eight point five or around that score. If I got the score wrong, forgive me, but it looked kind of shitty. I know there were so many zombies on screen, and there's a lot of city, and there's no loading. I get that, and that's amazing, but it still looked dirty and fucking just not impressive i think the, the impressive stuff came from the giant world and i liked it but super mario 3d world was the te- it looked better it it was 1080p and it was shiny colors popped and like that's one of the things about a lot of current quote-unquote mature games that are kind of they're kind of drab like the colors don't pop and they kind of waste the hd hardware it seems but nintendo's just doing really good things with it visually anyway i'm not i'm not ripping on there i mean there i mean even like look at something like bioshock infinite and they do interesting things with colors and textures and that was on 360 but something like titanfall is just 
very dirty and drab, and it still looks good for what they're trying to do, which I guess is realistic war-torn cities or whatever, but it's it's not compelling, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. To me, anyway. I'm not, like I said, I don't want to rip on, I'm not trying to insult people who make Titanfall. Incredibly talented people brought multiplayer to the Xbox One in a way that no one had yet. Bravo. Graphically, they're just kind of doing what everyone else is doing, and I like how Nintendo is not. Even though those graphics look really good on Titanfall. No, no argument. I just, I'm just trying to say, like, I like how, like, Legend of Zelda Wii U could be like Twilight Princess, where they just do drab, very dark, dirty colors, but they choose to do this watercolor landscape that looks just, uh, looks amazing. It just looks amazing. Fuck it. The gameplay, we didn't get to see a lot of the gameplay combat mechanics, I guess. And I guess, I mean, that, that'll that come later. Like, E3 is just going to be, it's just going to be like 50 semen-drenched orgasms of Zelda in my face. Which I normally wouldn't be into, but since it's Zelda, bring on the Zelda semen. Because holy shit. I want, I, I, I want it. I want to see that game full force at E3. I'm even more in. I'm I, I'm as interested in what new stuff they'll announce. Are we going to see Mario Galaxy Three or whatever it'll be called? I don't know. Will we see a Metroid game? I want to see a Metroid game really bad. I beat Super Metroid and Metroid this year. I had not beaten those games before. I'm starting to really get into Metroid. I want to see a Metroid game. Any uh, other gaming news off the top of my head? The only thing going on in movies other than the whole interview thing is. The Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies came out. <clears throat> I just want to touch on The Hobbit a little bit before I go. A lot of... There's a lot of fucking negativity towards The Hobbit. And I really like those movies. They're definitely not as good as Lord of the Rings. But they're not like a Star Wars prequel trilogy or anything. And for Star Wars prequel trilogy fans... I will... I, I, would, I will do an entire nerd cast on those. And I will list my qualms. And some of my qualms are different. I really want to talk about uh <laughs> I really want to talk about Spider-Man the Raimi Spider-Man series in just one nerd cast but that's those are just episodes in themselves. The Hobbit book was a children's story not intended to be like Lord of the Rings. Tolkien even tried to rewrite The Hobbit as a Lord of the Rings book that fit that motif and he gave up because it was so hard. These movies are trying to do that also and I admit the first movie is such a weird beast it has this war scene with the dwarves which is awesome but then it has them singing about dishes and it has trolls blowing their nose with bilbo and it has it's it, it tries to be the children's book with the funny stuff and then it tries to be this epic war movie and it just it melds so oddly and i i would give the first movie like an 8.5 or something it's good but it's just so mixed. Desolation of Smog, on the other hand, is amazing. I love that movie. I love that movie. The extended edition, excluding, like, I think the testicle eating thing was obviously a little out of place and over the top. Um, yes, I know people re eat Rocky Mountain oysters, and yes, it was most to, mostly to make you really not like this guy for some reason. And it was gross, and it shows him just, like, oozing with gravy and stuff. It, I get it, but... I'm glad it wasn't in theatrical version because it's gross. I guess they they accomplished their goal, but everything else about that movie, I'm a cumber bitch. I am a cumber bitch. I love Sherlock. My friend Three Dozer introduced me to Sherlock. It is great. If you haven't watched the six, no nine now, nine Sherlock movies, I guess they're actually part of a series, but each ser each season has like three episodes. In each episode, it's like an hour and a half long. They're movies. If you haven't seen those nine episodes, please go watch at least one, and you'll get the gist if you like the series. It's so good, and Benedict Cumberbatch is amazing. He was good as Khan. I like the Star Trek reboots, despite some of the changes they've made. And I'm, a, I'm an old-school Trekkie. I grew up in Next Generation. I watched every episode of every series at some point. And I still like the prequel movies, or the reboot movies, I should say. But that's, I'm not talking about that. I could do a whole cast on that, too. The, um, him as Smog, Schmaug, as 
Peter Jackson says on the DVD, Schmaug, he's just so good. He's the, he is the best version of a dragon ever. At least his voice. I know he didn't, like, physically play the dragon. Well, like, technically he sort of did, but it's not like Gollum. They just sort of used his emotions here and there. If you watch the special features. But, sorry, Sean Connery. He knocked you off as the best voice dragon ever. I come to think of it, there aren't a lot of dragons that talk off the top of my head in cinema. So, I guess there was no one to knock off except Sean Connery. Uh, most of the other dragons, like Dragon Slayer, a lot, I've heard a lot of people who are like 10 years older than me just be all about Dragon Slayer. Now, I, I watched that, and it's just such a bizarre movie. I don't know if I hated it or if I kind of liked it. I'll, um, that's, that's another conversation. The smog and Bilbo scene in that movie and the barrel chase is just worth the price of admission. I never gave a shit about Bard. But he's done. He's done really well in this movie. They've they expanded upon his character because they needed to. Because in the book, he just shows up and does this really important thing. But they needed him to be more dynamic. They needed needed him to be deeper. So, so I'm really looking forward to Battle of the Five Armies. I'm probably gonna try to see it tomorrow. We'll see what's up. I'll probably do a little mini review on here. And that's really it. That's not really the only thing that's going on in movies right now, other than the the Sony Pictures hack, uh, Super Mario Brothers movie. I I will talk about that later. That, that wraps it up for the first uh, episode of the Buckass Nerdcast, uh, Bandcast. I might just start calling it Bandcast. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Hearing me ramble about stuff. I promise to try to get other people on, but it is three a.m. in the morning now. Nobody's up. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope that you'll join me next week. The next several weeks, there will be an episode up. There might be a few weeks where there's not, or the episode will be really short, like a half hour long. I'm going to try to make at least an hour to hour and a half per week, but I I make no promises. And I'll put it up on the blog if there isn't going to be an episode that week, and I'll try to do a double-length episode if I don't get one up. I'm also going to try to get a theme song. But that's that'll, that'll be like a month down the line. So this is Trimmer Death uh, signing off, and I hope to uh, see your fucking asses next week on the Buckass Nerdcast. Later, bitches.